My name is Paul Hall. I'm a professor of humanities at Trinity College Dublin. Uh, I teach environmental history and I'm here at the Rachel Carson Centre as a fellow working in the uh, resource use and conservation uh, research cluster. My specific task is to write a book on the history of the oceans and human interaction with the sea. I think it, it's true to say that uh, 15 years ago it would really be impossible to um, to write a history of, of uh, human interaction with the sea, except in, in very general terms, and certainly not from an environmental history perspective. Uh, thanks to a lot of breakthroughs in sort of natural science, uh, we can actually now know a lot more about uh, what used to live in the sea. We have new uh, studies like trace element analysis. We have fishbone archaeology, which has uh, totally changed our picture of fisheries in the past. Uh, we have genetic studies, uh, which again are totally revolutionizing our understanding of fish populations. We now know that if we look in port records, in custom books, uh, skipper's log books, we can source a lot of information of uh, how people have interacted with the sea. Cod, in a way, is uh, emblematic of uh, marine environmental history. Cod can be used to, to analyze uh, things like climate change. Uh, we now know that uh, cod lived in much warmer waters in, in the North Sea and, and the Baltic uh, 6,000 years ago because they, they were part of the uh, Mesolithic people's uh, everyday diet. Uh, but the waters at that time uh, were two degrees warmer than today. Uh, so evidently uh, cod at that time had adjusted to warmer temperatures. Uh, so that's an indication that, uh, that cod is actually able to adjust to long-term ch uh, change in, in climate. Uh, the threat, of course, is uh, will cod in the future be able to adjust to rapidly changing uh, temperatures? We don't know that. Looking at, at the long term of, of human interaction with the sea, I think we can conclude that uh, uh, Luckily, uh, we humans have not been able to put the same pressure on, on the oceans as we have on the land. Uh, and the reason is simply that the oceans are so big, so vast, uh, that the fish still uh, have some places to hide uh, from our trawls and our gear. If you study the history of management of, of the sea and of fisheries, uh, of course, we all know horrible examples of when management uh, fails. Uh, but we do have some really good examples of when management does work, uh, like the herring uh, management of the North Sea uh, in the 1970s, again in the 1990s. The fish stocks were able to rebuild thanks to political decision to actually stand back. So we can learn from the management of the sea, both in positive and negative terms.